This is the story of Thomas Burberry, a British draper's apprentice who created one of the world's most iconic fashion brands despite all odds. Thomas Burberry was born in Brockham Green near Dorking, Surrey, and educated at Brockham Green Village School before opening his outfitting business in Basingstoke in 1856. He was an apprentice to a local draper's shop. Basingstoke was a small town with a population of only 4,500 people at the time. Initially, his designs were inspired by common people's clothing. Burberry, on the other hand, later began to experiment with the development of materials and clothing that could be used for outdoor activities such as fishing and hunting. His main focus was on creating waterproof clothing as well as a broader range of products. He collaborated with British cotton manufacturers to create weatherproof textiles that would appeal to the growing middle class and countryside. Burberry's engagement in the development of waterproof sportswear was proving to be a huge success as his company expanded rapidly. Burberry employed over 70 people in 1871, according to the census. By 1878, he had established a larger factory focused on wholesaling, manufacturing, and ready-to-wear clothing, employing over 200 workers by 1881. Burberry recognized the importance of promotion and publicity and made certain that both Lord Kitchener and Lord Baden-Powell wore his weatherproofs. He used these methods to grow his company into one of the largest branded clothing businesses in the United Kingdom. Burberry made the revolutionary discovery of Garbadine in 1879, a tough, tightly worn, water-resistant fabric made from Egyptian cotton using an innovative process, which received positive feedback at the International Health Exhibition in South Kensington and was patented in 1888. Burberry became a household name as a result of this discovery. In June 1904, he was featured in the trade journal Men's Wear, where the new fabric was described as resistant to hot and cold winds, rains, and thorns, and that it would make an ideal waterproof coat. Burberry was able to order his son, Arthur, to begin placing orders from the elites at the German Street Hotel as a result of the success of Garbadine, which eventually led to the opening of Burberry's flagship store at 30 Haymarket. By 1891, it had evolved into a wholesale store, with popular items such as the walking Burberry on the shelves. Burberry's gabardine fabric was worn by explorers as well as elites. Dr. Fridtjof Nansen, a Norwegian polar explorer and Nobel Peace Prize winner, was the first to use gabardine on his journey to the Arctic Circle in 1893. Sir Ernest Shackleton, a British explorer, wore Burberry gabardine on three expeditions in the early 20th century, including the famous Endurance Expedition. Are you enjoying this story? If so, remember to subscribe to our channel. In 1900, the British War Office approached Burberry and asked them to design a coat to replace the military's existing heavy coats. This order led Burberry to develop the renowned Garbadine Trench Coat, an ultra-light cotton raincoat with a deep back yoke, epaulets, buckled cuff straps, a button-down storm flap on one shoulder, storm pockets, and D-ring belt clasps for the attachment of military equipment. The coat became a must-have for the World War I soldiers, and it eventually became a must-have item in regular civilian life as well. It became the signature look of Burberry, and it's still seen in the media today. The trench coat was worn by Humphrey Bogart in Casablanca and Audrey Hepburn in Breakfast at Tiffany's, having contributed to its worldwide fame as a style icon. In 1917, Burberry retired to Abbott's Court near Weymouth, Dorset. He spent his free time contemplating religious and humanitarian beliefs. He focused on healthy living, which influenced him throughout his career as a clothing designer for soldiers and athletes. He was a teetotaler who advocated against tobacco use. He was also a devout Baptist who held morning prayer meetings. Thomas Burberry died peacefully at his home in Hook near Basingstoke in 1926 age 90, of unspecified causes, after witnessing the transition of his company from a small store to a public company, Burberry, in 1920. Since his death, Burberry was a family-owned business until 1955, when Great Universal Stores, GUS, purchased it. 
Burberry signed agreements with global manufacturers in the 1970s and 1980s to produce complementary products to the existing British collection, such as suits, trousers, shirts, sportswear and accessories for men, women and children. These products, designed under the strict supervision of the London headquarters, were produced and distributed through independent retail stores worldwide, as well as the Burberry stores, and contributed to the brand's growth in sales and profits until the late 1990s. Lord Litchfield was appointed photographer, Lord Leonard Wolfson was appointed chairman, and Stanley Peacock OBE was appointed managing director. GUS director Victor Barnett became Burberry's chairman in 1997, appointing Rosemary Bravo to oversee a corporate reorganization and the brand's restoration as a luxury fashion house. Barnett oversaw the company's successful IPO in 2001. Burberry became associated with chav and football hooligan culture between 2001 and 2005. Lower-priced products, the proliferation of counterfeit goods bearing Burberry's trademark check pattern, and adoption by celebrities prominently associated with chav culture were attributed to this shift in brand reputation. Much has changed at Burberry since then, and the company is becoming one of the most recognizable brands in the world. Under the new creative director, Daniel Lee, a new logo and branding were introduced in February 2023 bringing back the Equestrian Night logo. Famous British models and musicians such as Shy Girl, Liberty Ross, Skepta, and others appear in the advertising campaign. That's all for today. Do you have any suggestions for a future video? Tell us in the comment section. We'll be back next week. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, share, subscribe to our channel, and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one.